Hey there, it's Kathy with Be Creative with Kathy. And today I have a really cute little project for you. Look, it's a little cute box. I think this would be really cute on your Thanksgiving table with maybe some after dinner chocolates or maybe some after dinner mints and you put that on there and look how cute that would be for a Thanksgiving decoration. But So it couldn't have to be decoration. Look, I made the same box a couple months ago with my club and we use the little strawberries and here I just cut the regular cardstock down to size. Oops, and I put those little strawberry candies in there and look how cute that is as just a little gift. So these little boxes can be used. I should have made some Christmas ones. I think that would be cute. That's probably what I'll do next. But um, let me show you what supplies I'm gonna be using here with our project. Well, just a few supplies. We're gonna use this banner year um, stamp set this uh, happy fall y'all. I love that little saying and that's what we're going to put on this little tag here We're also going to use the love of leaves Dies or I mean sorry stamp set and that's at the end of the video I'm going to show you how I made this leaf here with some watercolor paper and some re-inkers I think that's a little we'll make our own ink pad out of that using the love of leaves um, stamp set and then of course we're gonna cut the love of leaves <laughs> we're gonna cut the leaf out with the die set that coordinates so this is the stitched leaf dies and then a crumb cake with just your regular um, circle there out of the circle layer dies you know I love those too okay so let's start with our little box here I'm gonna bring in in the mini catalog there are these craft sheets they're six by six they're already cut to size which is just perfect they're a little bit thicker than flimsy paper I guess and like I said they're cut to the perfect size so that's what we're gonna use and you can get there are 20 to a package so you get a bunch in here and we're gonna use that I'm gonna use these um, check and dots embossing folders this check one right here to emboss to give it I don't know if you can see it on my basket that little check it make it look like it's weaved or a baskety like that so let's do that first I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my plates now when you buy your die cut machine or I should say cut and emboss machine you get all of these plates with it now when you're using the embossing folders this is called oh you know, maybe it doesn't have it what is name but this is an embossing plate this number four plate but this plate you use with the 3d embossing folders and this is just a standard embossing folder and you can tell because it's thin the 3d embossing folders are really thick so when you see a thin embossing folder like this you'll know that you don't need that number four we're just going to use the number one platform. We're not even going to use the number two the die adapter because this is for dies. It's upside down. So we're not going to use that. We're going to just use both of those number three cutting plates. And you see how bad of shape mine are in? doesn't even matter because um, they still work. So I'm going to take this folder. And now you realize these folders are the mini ones that go with the mini machine but I'm gonna just lay my cardstock. I'm gonna try to get it in there straight and I'm gonna go all the way to the side here and I'll lay that on top of there. Let me move stuff, bring in my machine. Oh, where's, here's my machine. It's on the other side. Bring in my machine and just run that through. Whoop, it just fits in there. And because the platform is pretty big, you can lay that six by six in there, no problem. And <laughs> I was wrong. We do need the adapter. We're going to use that too. Because it ran through there and didn't emboss my paper. So we are going to use the number one, number two, and both number threes, but not the number four. Okay, so now I'm totally wrong. <laughs> and we need, maybe I should read the instructions, huh? Yep, do not use this one. I mixed it. We want to use boy next time I'm gonna do some <laughs> research before that's embarrassing okay we're gonna use this and this one and this one I feel like right now I have no idea what I'm doing because it's not gonna fit through that way <laughs> okay let me read again here insert bossing folder so we need that. See, it says we need the one. 
Oh, you know what? I forgot this one. Did I do it this way the first time? There we go. Good Lord, Kathy. So I was right the first time. I forgot my embossing plate on the top. You run a sandwich it through like that. Boy, that is embarrassing, but I'm glad we figured it out. Okay, then, now I have both number threes on there. I'm gonna slide this over to the other side. We can just rewind and pretend like all that didn't happen. I'm gonna line it up again with those little marks. I'm gonna lay it back on my thing and run now the other side. When I rewatch my video, I guess I'll get a good laugh of how silly I looked trying to run my paper with my embossing folder through my machine. I guess we'll all get a good laugh. Okay, so there, now you can see, yeah, look how cool that is now with that embossing on there. So now with that six by six, I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer and I'm gonna put one side here at two inches and here, oh, make sure you can see. And then with my scoring blade, which is the lighter blade, I'm gonna go ahead and score my paper. And then with my cutting blade, I'm gonna go from that six inch up to four inches because I wanna cut it to two inches, or I want up to two inches like that. And then I'm gonna come up here at the top and go down to two inches like that. And then I'm going to turn it all the way to the other side and do the same thing again. I'm going to put it at two inches. I'm going to score it first at two inches. And then I'm going to cut from the six up to the four. And you can see the little measurements over here. And there's a notch on your cutting blade so you know where you're cutting. And then I'm going to go down to that two inches again. So now two sides. That then I'm going to turn it this way. Now I have my cut marks over here and I'm going to line it up to two inches and I'm going to just score it and then turn it all the way around so my two cut marks are here now and I'm going to score it at two inches on this side. And this is just a quick simple way. If you didn't, if you're not comfortable with your paper trimmer like I am, you could just score it at two inches on all four sides and then you would just take your paper snips and cut up that score line to the other score line but I think with this being embossed it's hard to see those lines and so I just did it with my paper trimmer now I'm gonna fold on all those score lines and the sides I'm gonna make sure that I line up so that they are um, good or flush with the side. Flush with the side. We'll score this one here. And then get these sides here real quick. And making sure my sides line up and score that. And then I think I have one more side here. Yep, there. And now we have all, so it ends up looking like that but we just did it with our trimmer that's a little bit faster. Okay, so then I have a scrap here, or not a scrap, this is eight and a half by one inch, and I'm gonna use my bone folder and just kind of really softly break down those paper fibers to get it to where it starts to curl like that. This is gonna be our handle, and now I wanna ha hide our handle and make it smooth on the inside. So I'm gonna take now this is going to be the inside because you see how it folds like this. So I'm going to put the inside down and I'm going to just take a little bit of liquid glue and I'm going to put a little bit on the inside of our handle here and then just a little bit here like this and glue that handle to the outside of the middle flap. So see how I have the flap here and the flap here. This is the middle flap. And I'm gonna let that glue kind of dry a little bit. There we go, so it sticks good. And I'm making sure that it's straight. I wouldn't want my candle, my handle to be crooked. Okay. So then we're gonna take these two and we're gonna put this point to this point. Do you see how I did it? So it's like this. And I'm taking these two points and just putting them together. We're gonna glue those and see how the inside now is my handles on the inside, and yet it's hidden here too. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of glue up here at the top and then a little bit of glue here on the side 
And then let's see, yeah, and then I'm going to put a little bit of glue here on this side. And you can see if you hold it up where you need your adhesive, but with that liquid glue, I can kind of move it around and get it so that it's on the inside or the center of my handle. And there we go. And now we have, I'm going to lay that down and use my bone folder to make sure that's nice and adhered. And it still lays flat here because of those score lines. So there we go, let's do the other side. So there again, I'm gonna fold these back so they're not in my way when I'm working. I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive, or the liquid glue here, and a little bit here. And now this is where you'd figure out how long you want your handle. So I think my handle looks good about there. So I guess it's about an inch into this. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive here and some here and then some on the outside of this one. And then when we put those two together, it goes just like that. And really, there you go. There's how simple your box is. And now because you use that liquid glue on your um, box, the handle can really support the weight of whatever you put in your box and at least sits flat and it's really cute so that's a quick easy box that you could do any size now the fact that the craft paper is cut six by six that made my mind up i was going to make a little six by six box okay so let's go ahead and work now on this um leaf part right here which i think is really pretty so oh, i was looking so i have the biggest block here that we have, I have on my online store or in the catalog, this is an F block. And then I just cut a piece of felt. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I went to my my junk and found my felt, it, this is one of those stiff kind of thin felt. And I wondered if it was going to work because usually I use the soft flexible felt, I think is what it's called. But this one worked just fine. I've used the other ones before, so I think either one would work. And I just cut it down so it fits on my block this way. It'll keep the ink where I want it and it won't make too big of a mess. And then I'm going to take first our spritzer here. And I have some water in there. And I'm going to, well, let me grab a paper towel so I don't get a mess everywhere. But I'm going to spritz and get that felt just a little bit wet. And that way I think when I put those re-inkers on there, it's going to help a little bit help them spread and what I'm doing here is I'm really making my own ink pad I have here the Cajun craze nope this is Cajun craze this is crushed curry some granny apple green and some real red re-inker I'm gonna start with the lighter colors and I'll practice you can see how I did before and see how I like it and then if I don't like it I'll come back and add more color later but I'm just gonna kind of make some spots here big enough to fit my stamp and then I'm gonna go with some of that red and just kind of add some more re-inker and really it might look like I'm using a lot but really you would never even notice that there's some missing out of my re-inker kind of spot that around and then let's go with that Cajun craze and I want less Cajun, whoop, ooh, he came out big blot there less Cajun craze than I do the other colors because he's so dark so I'm gonna kind of I don't maybe maybe I do want more there we go but then I'm gonna come back with that green and fill in some more colors I didn't come back this is the first time but I want most of the colors to be or a lot of the green in my ink pad is what I'm trying to say probably didn't make that clear and really I don't think you can do it wrong because you want just the beautiful colors as I look out the window and I see those trees or the leaves losing their, the trees losing their leaves. Can't do two things at once. I can't put ink on here and talk at the same time. But there we go. So now we have some going on. Let's put a little bit more water on there and get that nice and wet. I am going to put a little bit more yellow on there. And you see how those are starting to fill in all those spots but this and then you can do a whole bunch of cards with this one thing 
or a whole bunch of leaves, I guess, because we're just doing leaves, depending on what you'd want. But this is like a regular ink pad. One more time, I'm gonna give it just a little bit more water. We'll see if I know what I'm doing if I'm just making a huge mess. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside for just a minute. Then I have some of our watercolor paper here, and I'm gonna bring in, they come tin to a sheet here, and they are tin to a sheet. Tin to a package, and they are five by seven sheets. There we go, got that right now. And then I'm gonna take that water spritzer again, I'm hoping I don't run out of water, and I'm gonna just wet down my paper here. And maybe, I'm gonna see if my fingers are clean. I was messing with my re-inkers this morning doing another project, and I got some ink on my fingers, which I'd like to keep off my paper, but I'm just gonna make sure it's all wet, and you can tell when it gets wet, it kinda curls a little bit, but I'm gonna make sure my paper has some water on it. Let it soak up that water. And what that does is just help that ink sink in to the paper when we stamp on it. So the stamp, I'm gonna use this one from the um, Love of Leaves dies. I'm gonna ink it up in this stamp pad that we've made now. And I'm not gonna move it around, but I'm gonna kind of just take it here and test it on my paper towel to see if, um, and see, I think that's really pretty, but it's too light. It needs some more darker colors in there, so I'm gonna bring in that Cajun Craze and just add a couple more dots of that, maybe in those spots that are still white. And then let's bring in some more of that red. And then you see on my sample here how it still has kind of the spots. So I'm going to bring in that um, spritzer again, and I'm going to spritz it and make sure those kind of seep into each other and move around. Let that sit for just a second. Let's test it again. There, and look how pretty it is. Now, it's not going to look the same on the watercolor paper as it does on the napkin. It's going to kind of bleed out a little bit more. I'm going to tap off this extra water. I have a little pooling of water down here. But now I'm going to hold this flat. And I'm going to take my stamp here. Well, in fact, you know, it's got... I'm going to take extra water off. There we go. And now I have my fingerprints on my paper. But it's okay. My ink's going to cover it up. So in this corner here, I'm going to just take and stamp. And let's see how that leaf looks now. And I am applying a lot of pressure. I want all of that ink to go into my paper. But there, look how pretty that leaf is now. Is that not beautiful? Let's do a couple more. So I'm gonna turn my stamp a little bit. And then let's stamp another one up here, just to see the different colors that we get. And now as my paper's wetter, you can see it must have been wetter here than it was up here in the corner because how that ink spread. And now it might look like a mess now, but it's okay. We're going to cut it out with the dye. And so it will, um, it'll be fine. In fact, the more it spreads, I think the better your, your leaf looks. So let's take that last little section right here and we'll stamp that down. Now I have three leaves. I can pick which one I want. But there you go, that's the watercolor paper that's just amazing, the way it spreads that ink around. This is making your own ink pad. Let me show you though how, well I guess you can see how it spreads. And then you could use this, like I said, again and again. But I wanna do a test while I have you here, which might be a bad idea. Let me find some place to put this where it won't get everywhere. I'm gonna set it right, yikes, right where? Oh, I know. Hold on a second. I'm going to take some of my press and seal, which we're going to use later, and tear off a piece, and I can put that on there so it doesn't get everywhere. This is the one that I used yesterday, and now I'm wondering if I added a little bit of water to that, if it would come back to life, because now it's pretty dry, although look at the mess there. That might be fun to use, but if I take my ink or my spritzer here and wet it really good again, Let's see if I can use that ink pad, or those ink that has dried. And there's the last of my water in my spritzer. Let me stamp this off so we can get a good idea and put that on there. I might need some more water and I ran out of water in my spritzer, but I'm gonna come over here in the corner 
and looky there. Yeah, so look, you can bring that old one. If it dries up, you can bring it back to life with just a little bit of water. So I would probably take these after they dry and put them in a stamp case and save them in case I wanna make some more leaves later. Okay, so now this needs to dry, and as you know, I'm not a patient person, so I'm gonna bring in my heat tool here, and I'm gonna just dry my paper. And honestly, I think it dries pretty fast, but I don't wanna try to use it wet. And I think I'm really happy with the colors and how pretty. I'm gonna dry some on the back too. And really, the, the heat tool, they tell you there's two clicks. One click is supposed to be the drying, the next click is supposed to be for your heat emboss, but I'm gonna do two clicks because like I said, I'm not a patient person and I want it to dry now. I'll keep the nozzle moving so that it doesn't scorch my paper, which is, it could very easily. And you can see as it starts to dry, it's gonna warp the paper a little bit and then I'll just flatten it back out on this side. And now I think our paper's dry enough to go ahead and use. And look how pretty my leaves are. I'm so excited they turned out good because with this kind of thing, you never know. On camera, it might have been embarrassing, but it didn't, it worked out just fine. So those those um, dyes that we've used, and I've used dyes like this, including these several times, but I'm gonna give you a little tip to show you how you can set your dyes and keep them together like this. Now, sometimes I use washi tape but if the washi tape is getting in your way and you can't see what you're doing, I suggest you bring in press and seal. Now press and seal is just that. I keep it in my kitchen and I'm gonna try to tear it down towards a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna cover that, those two together like this. And I have them just the way I need them. I can see through it. But now the press and seal is gonna keep those two together like that. Now, I'll be honest with you, the press and seal is if it gets stuck to your paper over here, it's gonna ruin your paper. Press and seal, especially when we run it through our die cut machine, is really sticky. And I don't want it to mess up the paper surrounding the piece I'm gonna die cut. So I'm gonna just cut it out a little bit more. Now, I do want to leave some of the press and seal off the edges, because that's gonna be like my washi tape that's gonna hold my die to my paper and I'll show you right now what I'm talking about so I can look through there I'm gonna line up my die making sure with this die there's a little bit you can see of the stem here and then it's gonna turn out nice because I don't seem to see that much white in the outline because the way the stamp and the water bled so let's bring in our die cut. Now I need platform number one. We'll see if I know what I'm talking about this time. Platform number two, my cutting pad. I'm gonna lay my paper right there. And then my third cutting pad like this. It still seems to be lined up because that press and, seal held, press and seal held my die in place. Bring in the cutting machine. I'm gonna lay my ink pad that I made out of the way, way over there where we won't put our hands in it and I'm gonna run this through my machine. Now I could take the time and run and cut all of these out. In fact, I would even cut that out and use it on the inside of a card or something, because even though it's cut off, it would show that it's hanging off the edge. I'm gonna take this off gently so I don't mess up, because it's really stuck and I don't want to mess up this leaf. There we go. And then let's peel that leaf right out of there. And look how pretty my leaf is. With all those bright colors, I'm really happy. There you go. So let's go ahead and finish up our little basket. That though is how you could make your own ink pad. And the watercolor paper is great with the water, how the it bleeds like that. But let's take these two layering circles. I'm gonna just layer this crumb cake atop this early espresso, like that. And then with my leaf, I'm gonna take a couple dimensionals and I'm gonna try to stay toward the center because I think, if I remember correctly, he hangs off the edge just a little bit and I don't want my dimensional stickiness to be hanging out. So I'm gonna take him like that 
and I'm going to just layer him right here. Yep, I am, I am really happy. I have to tell you, I was a little nervous because when you're doing a technique like this, you never know how it's going to turn out, but I think mine turned out really nice. Now, this was that um, very vanilla that I cut with the beautiful tree dyes, and I'm going to bring in that Happy fall, y'all, and some early espresso ink. Now, nine of it, if, you're, if you've been with Stampin' Up! for a while, you know we always used to say you stamp first and then cut, but then now that we have these nice photopolymer stamps that you can see through, and in fact, I'm gonna bring in my mat so I can stamp it on there. But now you can cut your dies, and then when you look through your stamps, you can line them up perfect. So you don't have to die cut, or you don't have to stamp and then cut. You can cut and then stamp. And I'm going to just lay it in there like that. Nice. Oh, and then I put it in my ink pad. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Then with some, uh, I'm going to bring in some of those mini dimensionals. Let's see if I can, yep, here they are right here. I'm going to put a couple mini dimensionals on the back of my little tag here. And then I think it looks better when you tilt it just a little bit, tilt your leaf a little bit and put your banner like that. And then bring that little basket. Now to put my banner or my circle onto my basket, I want to make sure that one of my dimensionals is right here on my handle so I'm going to put that dimensional there and then I'll put a couple dimensionals at the bottom here and this just helps with placement of your dimensionals so like I said you don't want sticky stuff hanging off the edge and this way you won't have any dimensionals where you don't want them okay just like that and then we're going to take that and set it right make my happy fall y'all straight kind of straight and this is all covered there's no dimensionals back here hanging off where you don't want them and look how cute your little happy fall basket is and then i did take some of this now this is just some i think it's called raffia is that how you pronounce that raffia and um you get a ton of it in a bag i just got it at a local hobby store i wadded up in a ball and i shoved it in there so now when you add your candy or your breath mints or whatever, it has a little bit of decoration in the bottom. So there you go, here's some other leaves I did. You can get all kinds of fun colors and stuff like that. And then here's my leaves that we did today that aren't even punched or cut out yet that I'm gonna go cut out and make some more baskets. So if you miss the dimensions, if you miss the supplies, the, um, if you're on YouTube here, all the supplies are right down in the description. If you're on, um, Facebook, you'll have to go to my blog, BeCreativeWithKathy.com, but I'll put both links and a link to my online store, so if there's anything you like that you want to purchase, you can go to my online store. They'll both be in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here Friday. I have two projects of Christmas that I'm dying to share, and one of them <laughs> will be Friday when I figure out which one would be better to do, but Christmas on Fridays about 11 o'clock in the morning. Thanks for watching. Oh! 10 o'clock in the morning. Sorry about that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you back Friday. Bye-bye.